We're embarking on another year uh, coming up and I've had a great year with YouTube and have enjoyed putting together some videos for you from the Vintage Tech. We're here in the secret undisclosed location of the N4KRO ham radio shack and we've got the listing radios here behind me and uh, a collection of some of the uh, listing radios but today I want to share with you a Christmas gift that I got from my daughter and it is the Zenith radio and uh, Zenith makes this model the pocket radio and um, we're going to do a repair video of this radio. Um, look at that chrome, glistening chrome. And these pocket radios operated on 64 or 67 volt battery packs and some 9 volt, or excuse me, some D volt batteries. And you can see here, we've got the, the uh, 67 volt battery pack and the little tubes, the uh, little micro tubes there. And uh, this is a four tube radio set. So I've uh, collected these over the years and have got some different models that RCA Victor. And uh, that's a beautiful little radio right there. Same idea, same principle of, um, uh, let me pull this cover off. There's the tubes, battery connections, and the battery pack sets in there. Uh, and there's nine, uh, one and a half volt battery here for the tubes. So and this is a four volt tube set. And uh, so these these sets were considered to be pocket radios. I'm not sure what kind of a pocket you would need. You would maybe a coat pocket, but that was an RCA Victor. Then uh, a dear friend of mine, ham radio friend of mine, gave me this one, uh, General Electric, AC DC. Um, pocket radio. It's got the handle, extended handle here that uh, pops up and uh, will let you carry the radio to your location. This is a uh, Model 140 and it's AC and DC. You can see the cord in there and uh, it's got a spring loaded cover and um, I rebuilt this one from and recapped it and did some repairs on it and it's an AM radio. And then there's the Emerson, which is a beautiful ivory marbled finish plastic. And this is the Emerson radio. Again, pocket and portable. Uh, the uh, base comes off of this, just like the rest of them. And uh, this is, you can see it a little bit clearer, the uh, uh, four tubes. And that's all they had, inch uh, of one and a half volt. A battery for the tubes and then a B battery which was 67 volt and I've adjusted I've modified this one to use both the wide clip and the narrow clip for my battery pack these are very similar the Emerson is very similar uh, to the Zenith that uh, my daughter bought me but this one is in remarkable condition it's made by Emerson and then finally, I have another Emerson radio, a little bit older model. And it's again, a uh, fold up pocket with the hand, uh, the lanyard on top. And the switch in the uh, lid, that when you open the switch, open the lid, the uh, radio comes on. And each one of these um, has the antenna built into the lid. You can see this panel here, there's a loop antenna there but this one's got the beautiful veneer dial on it and uh, another real pretty set let's see if I can get the base open yes I can um, it hinges um, there we go and it's got a battery pack that I built a B battery pack that I've built and even printed a, a little uh, cover for it but this one is uh, uh, already got a uh, 67 volt battery pack in it, a 63 volt battery pack, and that's sufficient for, uh, it's supposed to have a 67 volt that was produced by Emerson, 
and so um, instead I've got 63 because I can't get any more batteries in this set. Uh, they're just too big. Um, but 63 is sufficient. And let's see if we can get this to play. I'm not sure if this will play. Yeah. Yeah, so either the battery's dead or I've got a loose connection on this set. But in any case, that's one that's already got the batteries in it. And um, so that's the Emerson as well. So we've got a couple of Emerson. We've got a General Electric, an RCA Victor, and a Zenith. And the Zenith is the subject of our uh, project today. Let me get the scale out and I'll weigh some of these because you're not going to believe how heavy some of these are. Turn the scale on. And let's put it on uh, pounds. And we'll use the Zenith here. Full of batteries. Five pounds. Five pounds. So that's a pretty hefty little radio right there. And here's one, the, the uh, RCA Victor. 3.6 pounds. Now remember it doesn't have batteries in it. Let's put this one in. This one has batteries in it. Let's see how heavy it is. 3.4. 3.4 pounds. And uh, like I said, the Zenith is exactly 5 pounds. And uh, the Emerson doesn't have any batteries in it. It's pretty light. 2.2 pounds. So, there you go. Certainly not, oh my goodness, that, that is heavy. Certainly not a uh, radio that you would want to take to the beach with you. Um, but in any case, let's get this radio working and uh, then we'll, we'll test it out on the front porch where we don't have any metal roof that could create a problem for us. Well, I've got a Christmas treat here for you guys. A Zenith model pocket radio. A 1941 all original according to the label here and my daughter got this for me for Christmas and this is a pocket <laughs> so-called pocket radio if you can see pocket radio and isn't it gorgeous got the on off switch here that works with lid and uh, volume control and tuning AM and it is just stunning I just love it um, I've got two pocket size radios if you want to call them that and so I just all I've done is I have a, a battery pack that I created a 63 volt it needs 67 volts I think but this should be plenty 63 volt packet that works and then it uses as well as we can pull the cover off here it uses two one volt one and a half volt D cell batteries for the filaments and there it is there so I, uh, I just put the batteries in it and I started to pull the tubes out because there was just a little bit of crackle but no audio. And so I pulled these tubes out and they tested fine. These are 1L, let's see, they are uh, 1S5s and 1S4, 1S5 and 1S4. And then there's a tube here, the uh, RF amp, and it is a... Um, a 1R5 and it does not test good but I'm not sure what it's expecting to test so um, I started to pull out this other tube and look here hadn't done anything to it yet and uh, but look it's not even plugged in huh. so the tube popped out of its socket there and it's not even plugged in. So that definitely would be a problem for the tubes not heating up because they're probably series string. Well, they may not be series string because they're they're one volt tubes and we've got a uh, parallel, dual parallel uh, battery set up here. So one and a half volts, it's running in one and a half volts. I think the one volt tubes are 1.4 volts. We can go by the uh, filament settings on the the tube tester and uh, you can see that the one volt tube would probably be set on 1.4 so in any case um, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and pull this shielded tube out of the set and test it 
to see if I'm getting any normal readings. And then I'm going to plug it back in and plug this uh, other tube that tested questionable. And I wouldn't be surprised if this thing wakes right up and starts playing, but we'll see. I do have my AM radio station playing at, uh, on 600, which is actually a good station. So let's take it up to something off off regular channel there, 620 kilohertz. And let's uh, test this tube, put it back in, and uh, we'll go from there. And this is a 1T4, a 1T4. And got some yellow or some red fingernail polish on each tube. And uh, as you can see down in there. So somebody has tested these tubes probably and put uh, a marker on each tube. So we're going to test this 1T4 out and we'll see what how it tests. Okay, we're going to test. We've got the uh, 1T4 settings here. And let's see what uh we get and when we check the okay so it's testing good on the heathcote tube tester so let's put it back in and see if the radio actually fires up we can check for shorts here the short test is the uh button here and no shorts as you can see right here and um let's test uh Okay, test good. Okay, I've got the battery pack back in. Both tubes are in uh, on that side, the RF and the mixer oscillator, and then the uh, second stage and an audio output. Here's the 67 volt battery, Burgess battery clip. So we've got our two, our, our, um, one and a half volt battery pack in and let me show you the schematic here the drawing you can see the um, uh, the tubes and the batteries 67 and a half volt battery and i've got 63 plus that's about 64 volts and uh, this is all the information here so we'll leave that off and let's turn this right side up and uh, hook our battery pack up. I'm going to open this up. Here we go. And uh, this is positive right here. And this is negative right here. Let's see if we get any sound. Oh yeah, we get some sound. Okay. Okay, that again, we'll pull the antenna up and try tuning. Um, it did hear the six point uh, six hundred and fifty or six hundred and twenty. There's six hundred and twenty, and there's no audio on that just yet. So let's go ahead and plug some audio into the uh, AM transmitter and see if we can get some music into the radio. Okay, we've got the laptop plugged into the. AM transmitter and uh, we're broadcasting into the shop. Okay, so there is audio. Very poor. And it could be that that 1P5 tube is bad. It didn't test well. Um, so it is working. But very poorly.
Now let's bump it up to like 700 kilohertz. Just for giggles. Okay. There's 700. And that's full volume. weak stage tuning stage because see I don't have any other radio stations and even if I'm, even if I'm in the Faraday cage house here with the metal roof that doesn't bring in any AM radio stations um, there's one well yeah there's one that's just barely there Okay, I got a problem with the tuner there. See that jumping? Okay. So, um, we're going to pull a schematic and we're going to see if we can find, get some voltage readings off of this setup and figure out if maybe we do have a bad uh, tube, which wouldn't be, yeah, there it goes. Let's get the tuning right here. Oops, I unhooked my. Get it. All right. Started to say, we'll check that tube to see if that tube is bad. And then, uh, We'll see if we can figure out how we can get our improved gain. Okay, I tested the 1R5 uh, RF amp in the Sencor Continental. Um, let's see, this is the uh, MU140 tube tester. It's a pretty reliable tube tester. This is the first tube tester I ever owned and it does mutual conductance. So it's a really high grade tube tester. That particular tube doesn't have a mutual conductance test on it, but it did test at about 70, 68 on the GM uh, emission. So uh, it's questionable, but not bad. And the life test, uh, when I did a life test on the questionable, it didn't move the needle at all. So it's still emitting uh, some electrons, and uh, we're not sure if that's actually bad or not. A lot of tubes will test in the question mark section, and they're perfectly fine. They just never were designed to produce much more than 60% uh, emission. So uh, we're not going to condemn the tube just on this one test. This test, uh, the uh, I don't remember what I saw on this. I think I got a little less than question mark on the emission test on this tube tester. So that's why I usually will do more than one test on uh, tube testers. And I've got one more Sencor down here in the bottom of the bench that uh, is also a really nice tube tester. But we're going to go with that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull the knobs off here and see if I can pull the chassis out of the bottom of the case. And then we'll uh, do some cap testing just to see if we've got maybe a uh, shorted or open cap. Okay, pull the shell off of the radio by compressing these clips here and the shell just lifts off. It, it sounds easier than it was actually, but um, it's, uh, it's clear now so we can start to disassemble if we need to disassemble the chassis and I don't think we need to actually take it apart we're, uh, we're going to just try to test these caps, and um, there's 
some wax paper caps here, all uh, low value paper caps, which can be open and would really create a problem for us. Here's one there that I can't get to the bottom side too easily. It's down, down in there. And uh, so we may have to pull the chassis apart. I'm not sure what, what's going to be involved with pulling that, that panel off. Um, but we'll, uh, these are soaking wet only because I sprayed the uh, pot to keep it from scratching and I sprayed the sockets, all those tube sockets, so that they would grip better, and they do. Um, and we don't have the scratchiness anymore when we move the tubes around. So um, let's, uh, let's just test these tubes, uh, excuse me, these caps on the uh, Sprague tube tester. And we should be able to, uh, should be able to check those. I'm just looking for anything abnormal or burnt here. An antenna trimmer right there. Right there, you can adjust the antenna oscillator, and then uh, uh, the uh, condenser, tooling condensers right here, with one cap adjustment there. I think, yeah. So, all right. Don't see anything really out of normal here I mean out of uh, range nothing burnt so this cap here for the uh, volume control um, is one there's a deep or a coupling cap right here those would be easy to be replaced you can see we can get to the bottoms of them and uh, So we may replace those anyway. Um, let's just keep looking around here. Is it burnt? Is that burnt or is that? No. I don't know what that was on there. But it's not burnt. Okay, in the RF amplifier stages, we're going to replace these three caps here for sure. And uh, then we'll power it back up and see if, if we've got any um, improved gain on the receive. As we could say, we knew we had, uh, all, everything was amplifying, but not very well. Because we had uh, the Heritage Singers playing into the AM transmitter in the room. And it was receiving it, but not very well. And then we had no uh, AM radio stations coming in outside the house. So let's replace these caps. And we're going to replace them. If we bother to take them out, we're going to go ahead and replace them while we can. And then um, we'll test them just for giggles. But I'm going to be sure and, and uh, take these out. Very common caps so we shouldn't have any trouble with them okay i uh i worked on the uh i replaced a uh capac uh, capacitor here on the vine control and the converter tube was not connecting correctly there was a, a corroded tube excuse me a corroded pin on the converter tube and so i repaired that replaced one of these this r uh, c22 cap here and uh let's see what we got now Now remember, we're in this Faraday cage here, so if we get any audio at all on the AM radio in the shack, it's a it's it's a pretty good indicator.
keep pushing, keep making easy play. See, the middle of the band here is usually dead. All right, there's my AM transmitter. Let's get something playing here. Very loud, very strong. And of course the A, uh, let me turn the volume down. The hum on this AM radio station has always been a problem and I'm not sure how to fix it, but that's why we got a lot of hum there. Uh, anyway, uh, let me tune off of the AM transmitter. Should have something around 600. Oh, it's dead this, this evening. All right. Uh, let's pull up to the top of the band, see if we can get something. All right, I'm going to move the AM radio station down to 520 so it's off band or almost off band five fifty is about as low as it'll go on a regular AM frequency. Yeah so now we don't have that barging in on us. Okay, so the local station at 700. 780. 9, 850. And that's probably... Uh, a resonant frequency. Yeah, 520 would be 10, uh, 1040, and that's about where that is. Okay, and now we're off frequency, so, all right. So it looks like we got our decent repair. Now, you can see here, let me zoom in. Look at how bad that antenna, that uh, power wire is. It's just completely breaking to pieces. So I need to replace that. It's gonna short if I don't. It's just dry, and you can see pieces all over. So these wires need to be replaced, and then I'll get a, a wide snap that will work with my 67 volt or 63 volt battery pack because these are tiny snaps not the large snaps and uh so there are the caps a couple of the caps that i replaced and have really improved the uh playback very happy with the performance
Okay, I got the uh, 63 volt battery pack back in and the two D cells back in. Everything is buttoned back up and replaced. We'll put the cover back on. The volume control was broken, so I'll have to uh, I'll have to do some work on the volume control with some either some super glue, which probably won't hold, or some. Um, polystyrene glue model cement or something uh, this piece of insulation went in next to the battery so I'll put that in even though the battery uh, or actually went into the base and you can look in there and I put a piece of felt in the place of this uh, material so I'll lay this on top here just to keep everything a little snugger and uh, we should be able to button it up here Hey, we're finished with the repair of the Zenith Pocket Radio 1941, and I've recapped it and repaired a couple of bad connections. And uh, we're outside now. Locking fill to best fit your needs. So check out the color coded. Then third down or short yardage goal line, you always go back. A lot of uh, Wi-Fi and LED interference, as you can see, a lot of LED lights in this house. Probably 30 different circuits, and so those are just wreak havoc on, on AM radio. Find the children. Find the children. You can hear the interference there. Ten years ago, I started helping folks cancel their time to more than a month, well, two months to watch Justin. Office, um, who, who you know maybe aren't there. A lot of talk radio. When people bring up. Somebody just turned on uh, an LED light. And you can see that I'm, it's wiping me out now. So anyway, that proves the point that LED circuits in your house will uh, ruin your AM radio experience. And of course, most of us have never listened to AM radio of any consequence. And uh, but this is a real jewel. I'm real proud of this radio. Zenith is one of my favorite radios, and uh, you can see uh, that this is no exception. It's a real, a real find and a Christmas gift. So uh, I'm very happy with the way that the radio turned out. It's very heavy, but um, anyway, this will be a great. Uh, shelf queen on my uh, antique radio vintage museum and thank you for watching the vintage tech when radio was invented it was all am but in the late 1960s a format called album oriented rock was introduced it featured songs that just sounded better on FM. Within 10 years, the majority of listeners in the U.S. tuned in to FM radio stations. It all began in 1933, when prolific radio engineer Edwin Armstrong was granted a patent for his invention of frequency modulation technology. It provided listeners with clear reception, even in storms, and the music sounded rich and full. In 1983, 50 years later, the U.S. Postal Service released a stamp in his honor. Christopher Cruz, CBS News. Okay, there you have it. You got the full detail of the AM radio experience.